in the SEC versus Ripple case. We have some major deadlines tomorrow. We'll do a quick refresher on what those are. Meanwhile, John Deaton surpasses 70,000 XRP holders in his action in the SEC versus Ripple case. Ripple makes its way into the top 50 best workplaces in Fortune magazine and the U.S. government starting some pretty hefty actions here. A crypto mixing service has been blacklisted by the U.S. Treasury and U.S. lawmakers are looking to a digital dollar to compete with China. We'll dive into all those, but if we haven't met before, my name is Frank Cho. I'm here to help you live a richer life. On this channel, we talk about cryptocurrency, personal finance, and investing. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, do it now. That way I can keep you informed of all the latest news and updates. Let's take a quick look at the crypto market before we dive in. We're up about 2.3%, up to $1.13 trillion for the total market. Bitcoin briefly passed 24000 and is still right in the ballpark there. Ethereum just a hair under 1800 XRP at $0.38 cents in the 6 spot. Cardano in seven having risen two and a half percent up to about 53 cents and you can see the rest of the top 10 cryptos no change other than the binance stablecoin falling down to the eight spot now a quick reminder again this is a scheduling update courtesy of james k file and we've mentioned it a few times but i just want to refresh tomorrow a big day hit that subscribe button so i can keep you up to date we have the oppositions to the motions to exclude expert testimony that must be filed by tomorrow the 9th. And then the big one for the week is Ripple's response to the SEC's objections to Judge Netburn's ruling on the Hinman emails. This is going to be a very heated one. I'd expect this one to come from Matthew Solomon just because of uh, his fiery responses to some of the SEC's nonsense. So again, August 9th tomorrow, we have both of those items and those motions to exclude expert testimony. We'll probably see that on uh, both ends. So it will be a very, very news-heavy day tomorrow. So do stay tuned for that. And as always, drop a like if you find any value in the info here so we'll go through all of that it will probably take several videos to go through and will likely come at different parts in the day so john deaton we know has been a major voice for the xrp community and now his motions here have surpassed 70,000 xrp holders joining this class action against the sec and he represents xrp holders here as an amicus in the uh, SEC versus Ripple case. So enthusiasts and members of the XRP community from every state and 141 countries have joined together versus the unlawful expansion of the Howey test. And we look forward to hearing more over the coming weeks of some of the arguments that will continue into summary judgment as we move through that phase here. As we're getting closer and closer to the finish line, the next couple of months will be fairly busy in the case. So much more to come in this regard, but exciting to see him surpass that major milestone. 70,000 is a pretty big number. So a big shout out to him for all he does for the community. Now, Ripple itself, the business, not anything related to the asset XRP, but Ripple as a company has been ranked number 34 in the top 100 best medium workplaces to work for here by uh, Fortune magazine. Exciting to see that Ripple as a company is well regarded, not just for what they do, but for how they run their business and for how they treat their employees, which I think helps further their innovation. So I'll link this down below if you want to read some more, but uh, a nice update to see. We like to see good things from Ripple just because of what they're doing as a business and the opportunity that lies ahead. Now, other businesses are not faring as well uh, with the U.S. government. The U.S. Treasury has blacklisted crypto mixing service Tornado Cash. So the department has barred its use in the U.S. as a matter of national security because North Korean hackers allegedly use the mixer to launder stolen crypto funds. So the Treasury Department has banned all Americans from using decentralized crypto mixing service Tornado Cash, the Office of Foreign Assets Control, or OFAC, 
uh, has been tasked with preventing sanctions violations and on Monday added Tornado Cash to its specially designated nationals list, which is its running tally of blacklisted people, entities, and crypto addresses. And as a result, all U.S. persons and entities are prohibited from interacting with tor uh, Tornado Cash or any of the Ethereum wallet addresses tied to the protocol. Those who do may face criminal penalties. Do not break this. The OFAC is very, very strict. Uh, make sure that you do not use this service. If you have in the past, don't ever use it again if you're a U.S. citizen. Uh, this blacklist, it's very serious business, and uh, they take these very seriously as far as uh, sanctions compliance. You don't want to find yourself on the wrong end of this. So, again, this has been blacklisted Tornado Cash. Do not use it. Um, I'll link this down below if you want to see more, but uh, I really just can't emphasize that enough. Uh, you need to comply with these uh, sanctioned uh, entities and do not use anything on the UF or on the OFAC blacklist. Um, major, major problems if you do. The OFAC is also in charge of other laundering activities and compliance there um, when it comes to reporting cash transactions on uh, banks. Uh, over $10,000, they get involved there. Um, having previously worked in financial services, when transactions like that occur, you have to run it through the ORFAC uh, checklist. So just, again, very, very serious stuff. Uh, th they're sanctioned now and uh, unusable by U.S. citizens. So do make sure you note that. Now, U.S. lawmakers are looking to a digital dollar to compete with China, and now the Fed is considering the idea, but not in a big rush to join this digital asset space race. This article just came out in the Wall Street Journal earlier today, so I did think it was worthwhile that we take a dive into it quickly because we talk about this on a regular basis. We talk about CBDCs, we talk about the digital dollar, and other countries that are considering pursuing some sort of central bank digital currency. So here we go. Lawmakers are pushing the Fed to move swiftly towards issuing a digital dollar to combat steps from China and others they say could one day threaten the U.S. status as the global reserve currency. The bipartisan group of lawmakers, including Maxine Waters and French Hill, one a Democrat, one a Republican, has sought for the U.S. to counter global competitors launching digital versions of their currencies. The House Financial Services Committee, which both serve on, might vote on related legislation as soon as next month. Ms. Waters has framed the competition over new forms of central bank money as a new digital asset space race. The Biden administration and the Fed don't share a similar sense of urgency, though. Unlike private cryptos such as Bitcoin, a Fed issued, or Fed issued CBDC would be backed by the U.S. central bank, just like the Fed backs physical currency. Fed Chair Jerome Powell has indicated the central bank isn't in a rush as it confronts inflation and a slowing economy. Mr. Powell has said it's more important to get the digital dollar right than to be first to market, in part because of the dollar's critical global role. He also said the Fed won't issue a digital dollar without support from elected officials. The White House has remained largely neutral on a digital dollar with President Biden ordering a study to determine its implications for issues such as economic growth and stability. If you remember back in January, I think it was, that CBDC report actually did come out from the Fed, but no real action since then. So Chair Waters has drafted legislation that would require the Fed to study a digital dollar further, building on their existing work on the issue and creating a process for the U.S., to potentially issue one in the future. The idea does face stiff resistance. The banking industry generally says the costs of a CBDC outweigh the benefits, and it would directly compete with private bank deposits, making loans more expensive. For about a century, the dollar has reigned supreme as the world's most important currency, prized for its ubiquitous acceptance in almost any transaction from a cup of coffee at a neighborhood diner to a sale of bonds in Hong Kong and elsewhere abroad. There is now a serious debate about whether that status could be threatened by the march of technology and if, in response, the dollar needs to go digital. A digital dollar could provide a new option 
to the way customers pay for products and services, or consumers rather, in addition to using a credit or debit card or Venmo or Apple Pay, individuals would have a digital version of cash on their phones that could be used anywhere, likely through existing financial firms. That could lead to faster, cheaper, and safer payments that make paper uh, currency obsolete. The shift could ease movement of money across borders, reducing fees on cross-border remittances. Is there not already a solution for that? Let me know in the comments if you can think of one. Advocates also say it could lead to faster and safer delivery of government payments such as stimulus checks and unemployment benefits. Some in Congress say the U.S. is already behind the curve. Among the group of 20 major economies, 16 are in the development or pilot phase of a digital currency. According to the Atlantic Council, a Washington think tank, the European Central Bank, on behalf of countries including Germany and France, is exploring designs for a digital euro and preparing to launch a test pilot. Mr. Hill, the Arkansas Republican, said his concerns were animated in part by China, which began real-world testing of its own CBDC in 2020. In an interview, he said China's lending practices in the developing world could make it easier for the country to promote international uses of its digital currency, a potential threat to the dollar-based global economy. We should be concerned about China's predatory practices, he said. Chinese authorities haven't ruled out use of the ECNY, the official name for the country's digital currency, but says it is designed for small-scale domestic use by consumers. Analysts are looking for signs that the People's Bank of China will take concrete steps to join with central banks elsewhere to make it possible to use digital currencies between countries. The bottom line is that Beijing is uncomfortable with the outsized role the U.S. dollar plays in glo uh, global commerce and, in particular, fears being frozen out of the dollar-based financial system, such as in response to conflict in Taiwan. International transactions in a digitized currency created by China, the thinking goes, could be a defensive weapon in such circumstances because they would happen beyond the reach of the U.S., the Chinese embassy in Washington did not respond to the journal in response to uh, this particular write-up on CBDCs. Some lawmakers say Congress ought to authorize a digital dollar, not just study it. I do feel some sense of urgency because other countries are moving ahead, said Rep. Jim Himes, Jim Himes of Connecticut. The moment is now for CBDC, he said. Banks and some Republican lawmakers counter by saying any digital dollar benefits are best achieved through fi uh, private sector innovation. Patrick McHenry, top Republican on the House Financial Services Committee, said at a hearing earlier, what specific problems, if any, will a CBDC resolve? And that's a great question. Some analysts are skeptical that global markets would replace the dollar with the use of Chinese or other foreign digital currencies. At the Fed, Vice Chair Lael Brainerd has most enthusiastically pushed the idea of a digital dollar within the central bank, though she stopped short of endorsing it outright. She said a digital dollar could one day provide consumers with a level of safety amid a proliferation of privately issued digital currencies or digital assets, such as stablecoins. A high-profile collapse of a stablecoin earlier this year has raised concerns over such assets. That's referring back to UST. Remember, that's an algorithmic stablecoin versus more of the traditional ones you'd imagine, like Circle's USDC, which does have reserve backing. A digital native form of safe central bank money, she said, could enhance stability by providing the neutral, trusted settlement layer in the future crypto, crypto financial system. Now, the one thing we always think about with CBDCs is just what does this do to privacy? Privacy concerns come up a lot, especially in the crypto community. Having full access to the information going on with all of your transactions, as well as the potential ability to prevent transactions from happening and having individuals be blacklisted from being able to use their money at all certainly does raise some concerns. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Do you think a U.S. CBDC CBDC would be a good thing or a bad thing. Are you concerned about privacy or do you think that it would have
have a lot of benefits that would, especially throughout marginalized communities, enhance the opportunity to participate in the banking system even more. I'm curious to know what your thoughts are because this is a hotly debated topic and there's many different arguments on both sides of the conversation that could be valid, but I'm curious to know what your thoughts are. So I hope you found information in this video that was helpful and useful for you. If you did, make sure that you hit that like. It helps the channel a ton and keeps you informed. Subscribe so I can keep you up to date this week on the big deadlines. Thank you so much. I will see you in the next one.